This is Dan Rogers, your host on We the People Town Square, coming to you from the center of the universe, the high plains of Texas, near the headwaters of the Prairie Dog Town Fork of the Red River. Today is January the 3rd, 2024, and today we're here with Zach Coleman, who's running for Constable Place One. Zach, welcome. Thank you, Dan. It's nice to be here. So you're running for Constable Place One. What inspired you to run for Constable? Well, <clears throat> from the time I can remember, um, you know, most kids want to be astronauts or athletes. I, I always wanted to be a police officer from the time I can remember. Um, I was able to accomplish that goal uh, when I was in my early 20s. Um, <clears throat> I worked as a police officer for approximately eight years or so, and uh, my wife wanted to achieve her dream of being a nurse. And uh, in order to kind of financially make it work well, I decided to temporarily leave law enforcement and uh, go work for the railroad and since I've been with the railroad, uh, my wife's almost done with nursing school now. And uh, I was thinking about where I wanted to go back into law enforcement. And um, I just feel like <clears throat> the type of law enforcement I enjoy, uh, I enjoy community involvement a lot. And uh, looking around, um, constable, or specifically, you know, this job as constable, um, it allows me to not only serve the people of Potter County, but also interact with them and, um, you know, kind of bridge a gap between the citizenry and, and police. Um, I'll have more time to be able to interact with people. Um, not only, you know, when they, they need it, I'll be able to go out and engage with people, not in an official capacity. Um, and I feel like this, this position will allow me to do that and impact people the most for the better. What is the role of the constable? So the role of the constable is they're licensed peace officers, just like city police, like Emerald police department or Potter County deputies, but they mainly deal with uh, civil processes. So they serve civil papers. They bailiff the justice of the peace court but the role also includes law enforcement as well. So um, one of the reasons why as well that I applied or not applied, but uh, decided to run was, be, you know, I felt like I could do the job uh, very well uh, and possibly, you know, better than the, the current ones. And so um, that really, Push me in my decision. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> serving civil papers and uh, doing the bailiffing is, is an important part of the job and it's one of the main duties. But like I said, um, the law enforcement side as well is something that probably isn't done as often by the, the current constables. And so... That's, uh, so you kind of work with the, you, you'd work with the Amarillo Police Department and the Potter County Sheriff's Department. In a way, yes, sir. And uh, help each other. I yes, guess. yes. So, you know, Amarillo Police Department, they're always busy and, and they're shorthanded a lot of times. And so a lot of times the, the patrol officers, they're dealing with calls and maybe school zones, uh, aren't being patrolled, uh, with radars. Um, so, you know, it, if I have time, if I'm not, uh, fulfilling my duties, um, uh, in the court or with the civil processes, I could go out, I could, you know, run radar in the school zones, you know, c kind of take some of the burden, um, off of the regular patrol, de uh, deputies and the patrol officers for Emerald police department. Can you give, People that run red lights tickets? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, deputies and the constable would have all the authority to enforce traffic law uh, that everybody else does. But uh, the only thing is I can't I can't enforce city ordinances. That's something that only municipal police officers can do. Well, 
reason I say that, for some reason, it just seems like all of a sudden, tons of people are running these red lights. Yes, sir. And that goes back to my point about, uh, you know, the, the normal patrol officers on the on a day-to-day basis, they're so inundated with, with calls uh, with that they don't have a lot of time to enforce traffic law. Um, and, you know, you have the motors officers, which do a great job at uh, making sure people, you know, understand they need to follow the law, the traffic law. But at the same time, uh, you know, you still have people. I live right next to the Wolfland Elementary School. And uh, I see people flying through the school zone all the time. And so, and there's not a lot of police officers that are able to do that on a day-to-day basis. So you're, you, you, you want public safety. Yes, sir. And I guess the other thing that uh, where I interact with the constables a lot is on evictions. Yes, sir. So um, I think that takes up a lot of their time. Absolutely. And, you know, um, I've, I've seen some of the things, you know, and, and I don't mean to talk about the, the current incumbents, um, and I won't get into a lot of detail, but, you know, sometimes they, I'm sure it's as, uh, in a way to bring more awareness to the job and the role of constables uh, is why it's done, but, you know, sometimes they go live on Facebook during some of these situations. And I, I just, I don't feel like that's a very, uh, good thing. I mean, they're, you know, who knows, maybe a friend of one of the kids that was living in that house where they got evicted from, maybe he sees, Oh, that's my friend's house. And they, I guess they just got kicked out, you know, like it's a private matter. It should be handled with uh, respect and, um, not just, you know, respect for the people that are being evicted. I mean, uh, people fall on hard times all the time. Sure. And, uh, you know, you have to, you have to take, take a lot of, uh, put a lot of compassion into it as well. So, and, and I definitely feel like I, you know, I can have empathy for just about anybody. So, um, yeah, I didn't know they were live streaming eviction. I, yes. It's a position. Well, I, <laughs> When I say live streaming evictions, I mean after the fact. Uh, they weren't, you know, filming while they were evicting them, but, you know, they were taking video walking through the house of how, you know, dirty the house may have been left. And, you know, like I said, the first thing that popped in my mind was, well, what if I had known who had lived there? You know, like I'd be embarrassing for the person, you know. So it's not something that I would ever do. Um, I understand we want people to understand why or what role a constable fills. Um, but you can do that just as easy by going out, talking to people, um, you know, making your presence known in your community and your precinct, uh, not, you know, sitting in the office all day. Um, just go out. You serve the people of Potter County and you serve the people of your precinct be in the community. So that's, that's the way I see it. So how long have you lived in Potter County? I've lived in Potter County pretty much my whole life. I was born in Potter County. My dad lived on Polk Street. Can't remember the exact address, but it was a little duplex. Um, when I was born, uh, I lived I lived in Randall County for a little bit. My mom and dad, they, they divorced when I was real young. Uh, lived in Randall County for a little bit with my mom. And then I moved with my dad when I was about 10 or 11. We lived uh, out off of Triangle Drive, Triangle Drive over by uh, the airport, kind of. I went to Highland Park High School and middle school, graduated there. Um, I've stayed ever since. I lived in, uh, I lived in Sayre, Oklahoma for about a year when I was 24 years old. And I enjoyed it. I like small towns. Uh, I like the small town feel. But Amarillo, you know, is home, um, specifically Potter County. I mean, I've lived north of 34th most of my life. So, and I know 34th is not the exact line, but uh, just about. Pretty close. Yes, sir. Well, Sarah, Oklahoma is north of 34th. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. And it's right off I-42. Yeah. Yes, sir. 
Well, do you have a website or how can people get a hold of you if they want to learn more about you? Well, I have an email address. Uh, it's Z Coleman for the number four Potter County constable uh, at gmail.com. I also have a Facebook page. It's Zach Coleman for Potter County constable precinct one. Um, I'm on uh, an app called uh, next door. Um, feel free to find me there. The link to my Facebook page is there. Um, I'm not very techie. I don't have a, a lot of experience with that, and I'm, I'm still kind of learning. But uh, that's what I have so far. Well, very good. Well, is there anything else you'd like to tell the voters as, as to why they should choose you over your opponent? Well, um, I'm very passionate about what I do uh, when it comes to law enforcement. Um if you were to ask anybody that I've ever interacted with as a police officer, um, they would tell you, you know, that I'm fair. Um, I'm, I'm passionate about it. I uh, care about the people that I deal with and interact with on a daily basis. Um, I take a lot of pride in what I do. Um, I have two young daughters and, um, I know that they look up to me, uh, and, I want to set a good example for them. And when they look at you as their hero, you know, you, you kind of want to be a hero or hero like. And so, um, I would just use every day to inspire the next generation. Like I said, I wanted to be a police officer when I was a kid. I remember going up as a, as a young boy to police officers and they always had the time of day to talk to me. They were always nice regard. I mean, you know, being a police officer, I know now, you know, you could deal with a very traumatic call one second and then the next second be at a completely different call and you have to maintain a, the same level headedness, you know, and, and you could be, you could go to a store right after that same call and a little kid come up to you and you can't, you know, you can't uh, take anything out from that call and, uh, I just, I feel like I do a good job of that. And um, I just, I really think I could be a very good public servant for the people of Potter County. So you have an even keel. Yes. Yes, sir. I have about the longest fuse of anybody you'll ever meet is, is what any of my friends would say. So yeah, I, I don't ever get mad. I don't ever, I mean, lose my temper, nothing like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy even to me, you know, I can, I can uh, stay calm through just about anything. Well, that's a good trait to have. Yes, sir. I agree. Well, we want to thank you for having the courage to step out and run for public office. You Absolutely. Know, it takes courage, and it's a, it's a big, it's a big uh, task. Yes, sir. To run for for public office, so we want to commend you for that. Well, thank you. And we want to thank you for coming by and talking to the voters and good luck out there on the campaign trail. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Dan.